Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records, and I want to tell a story that happened 30 years ago tomorrow. So 30 years ago today, they say that Kurt Cobain passed away, killed himself, shot himself. Well, technically, they didn't find the body until today is the 5th of April, 2024. They didn't find the body until that the 8th of April, 1994. So he had been dead for three days in his place up in Washington State. I was in college, I guess I was a junior in college at the University of Mississippi and the Smashing Pumpkins came to town on April 6th, 1994. So, so technically, as we later found out, Kurt Cobain was already dead, but we didn't know that. The world did not know that for two more days. My friends and I walked over to the basketball arena at the University of Mississippi, otherwise known as Old Miss, and the Smashing Pumpkins were playing. They were on the cover of Rolling Stone that week. They were huge. Um, I don't know that Melancholy Collie had come out yet, but it was 1994, so you can do the math on that or tell me in the comments if it was out. But we decided to take um, some psychedelics, if you will, and go to the concert. We walked over there. We got in. It was packed. It was kind of a raucous crowd. I don't know if it was a Friday night. I don't know what it was. It doesn't really matter. And they launched my roommate's. Um, were huge into Smashing Pumpkins. I liked them as well. Uh, I didn't own any of the records, but I was familiar with the material. And we went in, they launched into some just great stuff. Again, they have like three albums out at this point. And it's just the classic lineup at their peak performing. At some point, and we are coming on at this point of the show, we, we are really... <laughs> you know, getting after it at this show. And at some point, Billy Corrigan gets upset with a crowd. And this is a Southern crowd. This is a is a university crowd uh, that's more familiar with the Allman Brothers, maybe than Smashing Pumpkins. And Billy Corrigan's getting upset. He doesn't feel like he's getting enough attention uh, from what I could tell. And at one point, he says, I bet you'd like it if we did something like this. And he breaks into Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana and plays like 30 seconds of it, plays the riff and so forth, at which point he stops and says, see, you're just an MTV crowd and you don't care about real music or something along the lines of this. Uh, maybe 10 minutes later, somebody throws a whiskey bottle at him. Um, I found that out later and he throws his guitar down and bails. He's played like 10 songs, bails. To be honest with you, my mental state at the time, I needed to get out of there anyway. And, uh, but what's crazy is he played a Nirvana song before, during the concert while Kurt Cobain was dead, but nobody knew that Kurt Cobain was dead. And we found out two days later that he was dead. Um, boy, it feels like it was a Saturday that we felt it was a beautiful day. I heard on the radio that Kurt had died. Um, and, you know, it was a big, big deal because they were a band that was really at the height of their powers. And Were they the biggest band in the world? Well, they they might have been, along with Guns N' Roses, Metallica, and maybe Pearl Jam at the time. Anyway, that's my little story about Corrigan and the Smashing Pumpkins throwing a fit, walking off stage, teasing a crowd with a Nirvana song that they thought would like it because we were all posers, I guess, to them. And they thought that they were cooler than everybody else. Check out my channel. We do shows every single day. We are, are going to be doing some album reviews next week. We always do a Miles Davis show on Monday nights. I have concerts coming up that I'm gonna be reviewing, uh, ranking the albums. I'm gonna do my top 50 hard rock and heavy metal albums. And uh, we'll catch you later. Peace out, see ya.